Well, today, the United Nations reiterated its demand that Russia withdraw its troops from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which it's occupied since March. In recent weeks, fighting around Europe's largest nuclear power plant has intensified. And the U.S. warns the international community is, quote, living under the threat of a nuclear catastrophe. Meanwhile, the U.S., Europe and Iran are at a critical moment in their negotiations over Iran's nuclear program. Nick Schifrin talks Ukraine and Iran with a man at the center of both issues. The International Atomic Energy Agency is responsible for monitoring nuclear plants and countries' nuclear programs to ensure they stay peaceful and are safely operated. To discuss both the Zaporizhia nuclear plant and the ongoing negotiations over Iran's nuclear program, I'm joined by Rafael Mariano Grossi, the IAEA's Director General. Sir, welcome to the news hour uh, in Zaporizhia. What are you most worried about and how worried are you? There are a number of things we are worrying, uh, we are worried uh, about. Uh, we are confronted here with a completely unprecedented situation. You have this cohabitation, if you want, uh, of, of the operators, the Ukrainian operators, with the Russian force. There have been allegations of um, um, confrontations, arguments, or even uh, violence, the shelling. Uh, which has been taken place intermittently. This combination of factors is an absolute unthinkable situation for an, any normal nuclear power plant. Uh, you said uh, about a week ago that one reactor unit had been disconnected from the electrical grid, triggering generators and an emergency protection system. Is that system holding? Well, the system in general is holding. There is one external line uh, of power which is active and then one uh, one local one and then there are some of course emergency diesel generators but you don't want to get to that stage of course I would say for the moment the situation is is holding but uh, at I would say um, uh, quite close to uh, to an alert uh, zone which uh, should be avoided at all uh, costs when it comes to the physical security of the plant, there have been explosions, as you mentioned. Uh, it hit uh, a dry fuel storage facility, damaged the plant's external power system. How serious have the explosions inside the plant been? They have not affected the, the reactors themselves, and even the, the, the spent fuel ponds, there have been uh, some impacts nearby. But I don't want to banalize this. Any explosion externally caused, kinetically motivated uh, on a nuclear power plant, again, is like crossing uh, the, the, the reddest of the lines that you can imagine. When it comes to access to the site, Ukraine says that it has uh, approved your visit, your personal visit. You've said you want to go uh, with your team. French President Emmanuel Macron said this week that Russian President Vladimir Putin did agree to the IAEA uh, visiting. Has there been any progress in that? Is there any sign that Russia is, in fact, going to let you in? As we speak, I'm working on this. I'm having very intensive consultations with uh, Kiev, of course, uh, and also with uh, Russia, uh, in order to work on the practical de details. Has the Russian side, in fact, told you that, yes, they are willing to let you come? We are, we, we are very close to that. Um, the, the reason I'm a bit reluctant, as you can see, to say yes, definitely yes, is because uh, we are in the consultations. Uh, we are seeing the stars aligning for the first time, uh, agreeing on the principle and the need for the visit to proceed. And we are working now on the logistics and the details. And this, I hope, uh, is going to happen in a matter of days, not weeks, but days. Let's turn to the negotiations over the Iran nuclear deal. As a reminder, in 2015, Iran and world powers signed a deal that restricted Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. In 2018, the Trump administration withdrew and placed new sanctions on Iran. Since 2019, Iran has broken through the nuclear deal's restrictions, including on manufacturing, enrichment levels, and nuclear fuel stockpiles. For the last year and a half, Iran and world powers have been negotiating once again a return to the deal, where Iran would restrict its program and the U.S. would provide sanctions relief, and they could be on the cusp of a new agreement. The IAEA is not a signatory to any 
of these deals, uh, nor are you part of these negotiations. And yet, your nearly four-year-old investigation into nuclear material found at undeclared sites in Iran remains a sticking point. So let's start with a basic question. Has Iran provided sufficient answers to explain the presence of that nuclear material? Not yet, but I'm hopeful they will. Uh, they know that they have to do it. We have agreed on a, on a mechanism uh, for this. When the IAA finds traces of nuclear material at a place w which had not been declared as a place where nuclear activity was taking place, my legal obligation is to ask the question. We need to have the adequate explanation as to whether there was an activity there, what kind of an activity was it, what kind of material we had. Do you believe you need that adequate explanation uh, of this nuclear material before the U.S., Europe and Iran sign any kind of political agreement today? That is a political question that needs to be put to them, not to me. What we need is the cooperation from Iran, and we also need the maximum levels of access and inspection. The more limitations we have, the less credibility or the less assurances we can provide the international community about the status of the nuclear material in Iran. Iran is demanding that uh, the investigation be closed before it agrees to return to any kind of nuclear deal. Has the U.S. or Europe put pressure on you at all to close the investigation? The United States has not put any pressure on me. There could be implicit pressure or explicit pressure from one side or, or the other. Pressures in these nuclear matters will always exist. They are part of the landscape, unfortunately. Uh, but if we keep our course, if the IEA keeps doing and is allowed uh, to, to do its inspection work, we are going to, to get there. I'm, I'm pretty confident. Separately, the original nuclear deal requires Iran uh, to allow more than two dozen cameras to film centrifuge production, uranium mines, storage facilities, uh, and other items. In June, Iran dismantled uh, those cameras. And back in June, uh, you said that the window to restore, quote, a continuity of knowledge was only three to four weeks. That was back in June. So does that mean you've already lost the ability to know if Iran was building more centrifuges? Well. That, that was a serious move. I, I do not, uh, I will not uh, rewrite or, or re-say what I said. These 27 cameras that were uh, disconnected were uh, covering important areas of pro centrifuge production facilities and other things. And we lost that uh, continuity of uh, knowledge. Um, if and when uh, the agreement is revived and we can reconnect the cameras, We'll have to sit down with our Iranian colleagues and, and see uh, how we can uh, fill in the gaps, if you want, between that time and, and the present time. I guess the bottom line, sir, do you believe that the IAEA will be able to detect Iranian nuclear activity uh, in the amount of time uh, the world has said through these nuclear deals it needs in order to react? I think if we, if we have the, the, the correct and necessary access, the IEA, the inspectors of the IEA will always be in a position to uh, detect in a timely manner uh, any deviation of nuclear material in Iran or elsewhere. Rafael Mariano Grossi, the Executive Director of the IEA, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much.